Okay, this is a five minute power review on part one of digestion, structure, function of the digestive pathway. So before we begin, just a quick reminder about the whole purpose of having a digestive system is to take the big macromolecules, the main ones in our food are starch, proteins, and lipids. And the digestive system then is designed to physically and chemically digest these macromolecules to produce the subunits, glucose, amino acids, and the three fatty acids and glycerol from our lipids. We want to get these subunits so that they can fit inside of our cells to allow our cells to survive, to do all the things they need to do to keep us alive. Okay, let's start on the pathway. Starting with the mouth, teeth, physical digestion, they increase the surface area of our food, and this is going to increase the enzymatic activity, more surface area for the enzymes to act on. Act on. The tongue is a muscle. It's going to help to compact, compact and push back our bolus so that we can swallow also has our taste buds um, when we swallow our food moves to the back the bolus moves to the back of our mouth swallowing is a reflex our tongue moves up creating a seal and pushes our bolus back into the pharynx dual passageway for air and for food when we swallow the flap that covers the trachea the epiglottis is closed, preventing solids and liquids from entering our trachea. Our trachea is designed for air. The dorsal tube, the esophagus, is where the food will move. The bolus will move down the long, narrow esophagus. The esophagus is where we have peristalsis, muscular contractions that will move the food down. Also, the the esophagus lined with mucus and the bolus will pass through our first sphincter our cardiac sphincter and enter the stomach the stomach some mixing action going on churning the stomach is very muscular and we can see it here represented in this diagram we also need to know the stomach produces gastric juice Gastric juice, amongst other things, produces hydrochloric acid, which makes the stomach have a very acidic environment, two and a half. This is designed to kill any pathogens that are trying to invade our body through our food, pathogens, and it also is going to activate the inactive enzyme pepsinogen and activate it into pepsin. From the stomach, we move through the second sphincter, the pyloric sphincter. Remember, a sphincter is a muscular valve that can open and close to regulate the passage. In this case, it's going to be acid chyme that's moving on. So at the top, bolus enters through the cardiac sphincter, chyme would or chyme exiting through the pyloric to enter the duodenum, first part of the small intestine. So small intestine, two things are going to go on here. Chemical digestion is going to be complete. So all our food is going to become small subunits. As well, once chemical digestion is complete, we are going to see absorption of our nutrients occur here. Remember the small intestine is connected to two accessory organs, the gallbladder, the gallbladder storing and releasing bile. Bile is big word, big important word, in emul, emul, see, fire, which is a very good example of physical digestion. And it emulsifies our lipids, our fats in our diet. As well, the small intestine is connected to the pancreas. 
the pancreas makes pancreatic juice and we will talk about the contents of pancreatic juice in our next review session. One important thing we'll mention here though is that it contains sodium bicarbonate. Sodium bicarbonate changes the pH from two and a half to a pH of eight and a half. So it changes it from being acidic to basic. Let's just review quickly nutrient absorption. We should be familiar with the structure of the villus that we did for our assignments. Remember, this is where the nutrients move from the lumen. So from this side, they're going to cross this layer of cells, the epithelial cells, and they are either going to move in if they are glucose and amino acids, they're going to move into the blood of the capillaries. If it's the subunits from fat, the three fatty acids and glycerol, then these subunits move into the lymphatic system. They move into the lacteal, which is shown in this diagram by the green structure, the lacteal. Last structure, large intestine. We can recognize where it begins by the appendix. The appendix is a vestigial organ, meaning it's a remnant, it's left over. And two functions for the large intestine, water absorption. And when we say water absorption, we mean the water that was used, the water that we put out to make our digestive juices, we have to regain them. We have to take them back. Otherwise, we would die of dehydration. The other significant thing going on here, we have a bacteria inhabiting our large intestine, E. coli by name, that synthesizes for us vitamin K and vitamin B. End of the large intestine, storage of feces, and then our last sphincter out, the anal sphincter. Just a reminder, our next uh, review session will be on the overview of the digestive enzymes and a reminder to look at the test outline that I posted on Facebook for you. Let me know, was this helpful? If it was, then I can keep making them. If not, oh well, try something else. Okay, hope that helps.